As you saw in that campaign video announcing his campaign, the Biden administration is trying to promote Vice President Kamala Harris's work as part of its strategy to get him reelected. NBC is reporting that some White House aides think that Harris needs to be more prominently displayed to counteract criticism in the past of her performance, highlighted by nagging voter concerns by the president's age as he fights for a second term. According to two people familiar with those conversations to NBC News. And joining me now is NBC Washington correspondent Amish Alcindor, who wrote that article and about the vice president, and Washington Post columnist Eugene Robinson, who was a column today about Vice President Harris. His recent column today is titled, Kamala Harris Must Keep Walking a Tightrope for Biden's Reelection Bid. Indeed, that's a, a great way to phrase it. All yeah. vice presidents are walking tightropes well, in exactly. one way or the other, but hers exactly. is particularly heavy. Well, but it's, it is the nature of the job, right? I mean, the nature yeah. of the job is you're not supposed to get in front of the president. You're not supposed to make news on your own. You're not supposed to set policy. You're supposed to be a good soldier. You're supposed to take all the lousy assignments that you get, if you get any assignments. Uh, you're supposed to not complain about it. Um, and you're also supposed to learn. I mean, especially if, as, um, as with Senate, um, Vice President Harris, uh, you come to the job without a lot of experience in Washington. Uh, and I think that's kind of what she's been doing. I mean, learning all about foreign policy, learning all about how the levers of power work uh, in the city, uh, and um, uh, doing the, you know, the president's daily brief and doing all the things that you do, um, except make news, which you're not supposed to do. <laughs> and in that video that I referred to, you mean she, she appears more than a dozen times. It's very clear what, what the strategy is. And it's partly because of his age. They have to build her up so that people don't vote against him out of concern that his running mate couldn't take over if something, you know, God forbid, were to happen. Certainly, and it's it's particularly interesting how much she's featured in that video when you think back to 2012, where Obama did not even have Joe Biden's name or an image of him in his re-election um, launch video. What you see and what my reporting has shown is that inside the White House, there's been this growing realization that in order to really have a strong ticket, they need to be able to more prominently display the work of the vice president. And that means really talking about her work on abortion rights, which is why you saw that rally that she did at the Howard University the day that they announced that they were going to be running for re-election. But it is also about age. We saw Nikki Haley just yesterday talking about the fact that President Biden might not really be around. He might die, she said, which is a remarkable thing to say. Some would say a, a mean thing to say, frankly. Well, we actually have we have a full screen of that because it really is extraordinary. Uh, first of all, that, that she suggests it's unlikely he would make it to 86 years old. And then Andrew Bates, uh, in an unusual response, responded uh, when asked about it. The White House Deputy Press Secretary firing back, saying, well, as you know, we don't directly respond to campaigns from here, but honestly, I forgot she was running. I mean, it's that biting, it, but it is a biting response for a biting comment. I mean, so many people are saying, okay, obviously age is an issue, but to say someone whose family loves him, whose grandchildren love him, that he might die in five years just seems to be beyond the pale. But that's the sort of incoming attacks from Republicans that the White House is now fortifying for. And then Kamala Harris is going to be a big part of that because there are some who are going to be basically arguing that she's really at the top of the ticket. It's, it's really going to be a President Harris who's running here. You also have to understand, as, as I'm sure you do, and our viewers might know this, that there, she had some issues that she had real issues with when it came to borders, the border issue. Um, but now she she has abortion rights, and she's really found her voice there. So there really is this, this realization that that is the work that yeah. she needs to be doing and, and be doing louder. And then Eugene, they gave her the toughest assignments. Well, yeah, they fix know, the border. Solve the right. immigration okay, fix the policy, border which... at a time when a real fix for the border is totally impossible. You can't do comprehensive immigration reform. You can't, and you can't move one piece of the puzzle you know, without moving. John McCain the... tried it. it. Marco Rubio exactly. tried it. It's Everyone been tried, it. and it didn't work, and it's certainly not going to work now. So. So, you know, yeah, you, that's part of being vice president. You know, there are political reasons for, getting, for highlighting her in that video because of her appeal uh, to important components of the Democratic base. Uh, you know, the Democratic Party's most loyal and avid voters are African-American women. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a message to that base as well. And as far as Nikki Haley is concerned, when's the last time we talked about Nikki Haley's presidential campaign? That's why Nikki Haley said such a rude and, and, uh, and tasteless thing, I think, is because she's polling at like 1%. And, and so now at least people are talking about her, but not 
not in good, not in a good way. And in fact, she brought up the age issue in her announcement when she talked about generational change. She did talk about generational change in her announcement, but this, I think, was a comment that was that was really just crude in some ways. I also think it's important to note, as part of my reporting for this article, I talked to Benjamin Crump, who, of course, is a civil rights attorney, who in 2020 wrote a column urging President Biden to run to to run and to pick um, Vice President Harris, and he told me that he has found her to, of course, still be inspiring to communities. He's a vocal supporter of her, but he said he's also had frank conversations and said, "Hey, when constructive criticism." There there are people who are asking, what are you doing? And he said that he told the vice president, you need to be more visible. People, of course, there are big decisions and big deals that are being made be behind closed doors. But he was hearing from people saying, we want to see more of her. And then now you, of course, have seen her in Tennessee talking to those lawmakers who expelled. You saw her delivering these fiery speeches. So I think even for the people who are so loyal to her, there's this realization that she also needs to really be seen and make sure that her voice is heard and make a little bit of news, even though she's, as vice president, you're not supposed to make news. Well, to make news, but Eugene. Vice presidents get seen when presidents want them to be seen, right? When <laughs> and White and I was going to say, when seen. I was covering her in, in Munich mm -hmm. in February, they wanted her to be seen. Right. She had not mm -hmm. really had an impact the year before, and she really did this time, mm -hmm. and they gave her a very big role, mm -hmm. you know, leading yeah. up to Blinken's announcement about China. She also was, exactly. you know, laying the groundwork for that. But at the same time, you know, it's such a tough job. Mm -hmm. To be seen and be to be active on the abortion issue, I think that is mm -hmm. absolutely the perfect megaphone for her. That issue, yeah. that's a good platform, I should say. Then she's the perfect, you know, speaker. Yeah, she really does seem to have have found a, 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 her voice or a new level of voice <laughs> on that issue. She really Especially has. on an issue where President Biden is, of course, a vocal supporter of abortion rights, but he has at times been a little bit of a reluctant speaker based on the people that I've been speaking to. And she is someone who, as both a prosecutor who dealt with sexual violence cases and also as a woman and a woman of color, has viscerally been able to connect to this issue. So it really is an issue that has, has really gone to the core of her strengths. Oh, great reporting and loved your column today. Thank you so much, Eugene. It's good to see you.